Hello, friends and family. Welcome to day 32, cycle 2, day 10, of my battle to crush aggressive, diffuse, large B cell lymphoma. Got it on the first try. How do you like them cookies? Let's get into status. Okay, eating. Um, not as much of a disaster as it's been over the last several days. Um, still really don't have a big appetite, but um, the nausea is definitely controlled by eating. Haven't taken any medication now. I guess it's 48 hours. Mouth pain, teeth pain, throat pain, all real. So that is somewhat of a deterrent, but I've been just making food choices that um, agree with my palate. <laughs> um, my weight is down another half kilo, so I'm still about one and a half up from my lowest weight, but I think that's all reasonable. Um, sleep, six hours and 37 minutes. But I don't want to delude you. I've done nothing today but lay in bed or lounge on the couch. I have done no other activities. I mean, I walk to the bathroom or get myself food or drink. But I have exerted no energy on anything besides relaxing. <laughs> kind of. I'll talk about that in a little bit. So mostly chill on the couch. I did spend an extra hour, hour and a half laying in bed but didn't fall asleep. But that still counts. That was resting my body. My brain, not so much. But my body rested. <laughs> Mental health space. Um, I think I'm going to categorize today as hopeful healing. So overall, today is better than yesterday, which is a blessing. Yesterday was better than the day before, by far. Um, so I feel like there's hope that the that my body is working through the poison, and we're going to get to our new normal, hopefully, <laughs> in a few days. Um, all the same pains, aches and pains I, I described. My finger neuropathy, I'm jumping to chemo symptoms, my finger neuropathy, it doesn't seem as defined as it was earlier this week. So that seems to be easing up a bit. I can still feel it, but it's not as much. Um, just as a side note, I never developed any neuropathy this round um, in my toes or my feet or anything like that. I didn't notice anything in, in my lower extremities, but I did notice it on my fingers, which is a little unusual because I've been crocheting like a mad woman, as you all know. So I've been using my hands for writing and crocheting quite a bit. I would have expected to have less impact here because I'm flowing blood there, but who knows. Um, nausea, yes. Throat, um, mouth pain, tired, relaxing. Re I'm relaxing to address the tiredness. Um, not as droppy. Definitely chemo brain. I haven't made too much effort to alleviate the chemo brain as far as puzzles and so forth and so on, although I did do some maths today, so maybe that counts a little bit. I'll talk about that in a little while. Um, what else? My steps yesterday, not as bad as I expected, 4,200 steps. I did two sun salutations and one Viparita Karana, Karani. Um, that is the new pose that I'm trying. I did it this morning and it was not as distressing as yesterday. So I think the thing that I did wrong was I tried to use props, maybe incorrectly. And the second thing was that I maybe did it for too long because all the documentation said try to hold the pose for five to 10 minutes. But maybe it's something I need to work up to. So today I only did it for a minute or two minutes, minute and a half, something like that. And the pose is basically you lay with your bum against the wall and your legs straight up the wall. And it's supposed to help your lymphatic system and the blood flow and help your heart not work as hard and, you know, relax all your body parts and all that stuff. I did not have that experience yesterday. Today it was a little better, as I mentioned. Uh, some of that is the tightness of your legs and, you know, how flexible you are and all those other things. So I think the sun salutations will help. Also, this time last cycle, I seem to remember that I had that super flexible, flexy thing going on. And I wonder if that um, didn't impair... The stretch yesterday with the props if I overstretched something and that was what made me uncomfortable. But we're, we'll keep trying. Like I said, I'm just going to do little bits of it. Um, I am able to do the sun salutation with the pick line in as long as I got my cuff on here. So that's good and I'll keep working on that as well um, to build strength and keep muscle. Um, all right, so what else can I tell you? My vitals were fine today and I think that's all I have for that. So let's jump into accomplishments for the day. Okay, so I did, let's see, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> hang on, I need to drink a water. <coughs> excuse me. Mm. 
I guess I'll mention that. Uh, I don't know if it was yesterday or the day before. I think it was the day before yesterday. I noticed that I could drink more if I just drank water with the splash of juice versus seltzer with the splash of juice. Generally, I like this the way the seltzer feels in my mouth, like the tingles on my mouth. But as far as ingesting lots of fluid, um, it was kind of hindering me. So for the last two days, I believe, I've been drinking just water with a splash of juice in every water. And I have been able to increase my water intake. Now, some of that is due to not being so crazy nauseous constantly. But I think some of it had to do with that. And I'll probably go back to seltzer before long, but I'm going to wait until... I think I can tolerate it. Just listening to my body and doing what I got to do, right? So as far as to do, I still want to work on my red hat. I did not work on that at all today. And um, I did make some progress on my, I think I called it a pocket shawl the other day. I did some research. I decided to make my own pattern, A, and B, figure out my own stitching. So I've done that today. Uh, and I'm going to do a poncho slash shawl. And I still don't know if I'll have pockets or not. I think I'm going to have to determine that after I make the make them make it make the garment and then I'll figure out if I can add pockets or not um so let's see so for warm-up America I, I did three more rectangles so that puts me up to seven total and here they are so there's a little bit of method to my madness while I was trying to figure out the stitching for my uh my shawl I was practicing by making these little rectangles. So they basically were sampler squares to determine, do I like this enough to make a whole shawl out of it? Does it work up quickly? Is it too hot? Is it too thick? Is it too thin? You know, that kind of stuff. So those were the three I made, but you know, I, it's kind of cool that I was able to make something that I can donate that goes to good um, while, I'm, while I'm working on something selfish, you know, a, a, a garment for myself. So that's kind of cool. So now I have a total of seven. I did a quick look up. They said it takes 20 of the rectangles to make a baby blanket and up to 49 to make an adult blanket. And there was a number in between, I forget, maybe 29? That was for like a wheelchair or lap gun kind of thing. I forget the number. I'd have to look it up. But it's kind of cool. So that, that I am enjoying that. It's not uh, as much pressure. I used to do, and I still would like to, but I think it takes a little too much brain power for me right now, <laughs> to be honest. Um, I do... Um, knitted knockers, which is, and I crochet them, but they're crocheted um, breast prosthetics for women that either can't afford um, to get breast replacement or medically can't get it, or even the silicone is too expensive and or, you know, aggravates their body or for lumpectomies. So they, the, the knitted knockers are really cool exercise. And I've made many, many, many pairs of knitted knockers, but um, as far as donations go, but uh, it's, the, the pattern is more complex than a seven by nine rectangle and I don't have it in my, my brain right now. So that's, that'll be another day. Okay. What else can I tell you? Oh, I, I made an observation today. Okay. This is totally in left field guys. I'm sorry. The last time I had chemo 15, 14 years ago, I had developed taste aversions to like my favorite things. So like the morning of my first treatment, I got up, I had a cup of coffee just to relax. I like peanut butter and chocolate. I like, like all these things. And within that week, I could no longer even stand the smell of coffee. And for a year after I stopped treatment, I couldn't even walk by Starbucks in the mall because the smell would make me gag. And peanut butter and chocolate, I eventually got back probably within six months after I stopped treatment. But I developed many taste aversions the last time I was sick. And so far, we're 32 days in. I should knock on some wood. <laughs> uh, I haven't developed any taste aversions yet. And I don't know if that's because I'm generally feeling better or because my, I'm making food choices when I'm the sickest that have really are bland and have no taste. So I, how can you be taste averse to something that has no taste? I don't know. It could be that. Certainly could be that. Okay, so let's see. All right, so let me tell you what I did today. This was my activity for today. I'm going to move over a little bit for show and tell. So right here is a picture what I did today was I figured out, based on, I watched several videos and some, um, you know, read some patterns from other folks to try and figure out, do I want to do a pocket shawl, which is essentially a large rectangle that kind of hangs like a big scarf with pockets on it, or how I wanted to handle it. So let me tell you a little bit about my need. So when I go back for chemo at the end of the month and any subsequent treatments, because this is, pick line is in my arm, 
I'm gonna have the fanny pack, but it will be difficult to have like a long sleeve shirt or anything that has any kind of cuff on it or any type of tight t-shirt because I have to work everything, my bra and my t-shirt and everything, anything I'm wearing over not only the pick line that's attached to the, the pump, the lines, but also the pump in the fanny pack, which is fairly sizable. Um, in this last round, I was able to get it off if I wore one of the boy, boys or Bill's, you know, 1X, 2X t-shirts, which I swim in, but I'm home anyway, it doesn't matter. <laughs> um, then I could um, then I could get it on and off. So my thought was if I could come up with um, a crocheted garment that's essentially a poncho, shawl type of thing that can go on over, you know, a tank top or something that's got large enough sleeves that I can get it in and out, but gives me warmth and cuddles me up while I'm wearing it, then that would be a good option for the days when I go to the center because they're going to connect me and then I'll be able to get in and out of the clothes. And it might even be an option if we have to go somewhere while I'm on the pump because then I can get in and out and it's presentable. Plus, I just might love it. Who knows? So in any case, I did lots of research and I came up with the kind of a hybrid solution of a poncho shawl. And what it's going to look like is this. So it's essentially two rectangles. Um, I'm not looking at the numbers now, but they're here on the screen. I think the one rectangle will be 16 inches by 24 inches and the other will be 16 inches by 41 inches. So hopefully I, I wrote the numbers on the screen so you can see them here. And this was measured for me, somebody my size. I'm probably an adult woman's medium, for lack of a better term, and petite. I'm only five, one and a half, five, two. So I came up with the sizing. And what I did was I used these scrap pieces of paper and stapled them together into the pattern. And then I draped them on myself <laughs> to see if I liked where it landed. Now, of course, the paper is not going to lay like fabric or the crocheted yarn will lay. But I got kind of an idea and I decided this was a good size. So this is what I'm doing. All right. So then you saw that I've worked to figure out the stitching. So I think I told you, but this one is the stitching that won. Whoops, that's upside down probably doesn't matter. And so then I started working on my shawl. So I had this yarn for a, I was going to do some kind of shawl poncho type thing. I bought this yarn a while ago. So this is what I've started so far of that um, pattern. And the yarn is variegated. That's not me doing anything special. This is um, Yarn Bee Sugar Wheel Cotton. It's a lightweight three yarn and this ball has 142 grams. So I have three balls of this yarn and I've calculated I need just about two. And then I have to figure out if I'm going to do fringe or if I'm going to do pockets and all that kind of stuff. But I think I'll make those determinations after I get the base garment together. So that's what I'm doing right now, what I'm working on. So this is my current task. <laughs> I'm working on this shawl poncho and I have a deadline it needs to be done before the end of the month so that's where I'm at all right so let's see anything else to tell you about Warm America switch patterns oh okay so I told you I still want to work on my red hat not sure when I'm going to do that that's probably an hour so if I get bored of the stitch or whatever's going on I might switch over I may also decide on this to add a hood so I could just pop up a hood or I might make a matching hat. I haven't decided. I definitely have enough yarn to do all that. So I have to make decisions about that, that kind of stuff. Um, but again, I'm going to finish the base garment and then make those decisions. Um, I think that was, oh, I have one angel delivery today. We got this today in the mail. Well, and the, the box came delivered. Anybody know? I hope you recognize it. It's always a good day to have a cookie. It was lovely. Uh, we got one package of peanut butter patties. We used to call them taglons. Two packages of shortbread. Two packages of thin mints. And a new gluten-free caramel chocolate chip. So I'm excited to try all those. Uh, the boys have already laid claim. The gift did say to Jen, Bill, and the boys. So they're welcome to it as well. <laughs> I can't eat all those cookies, but it was a nice little treat. So thank you for thinking of us. That was very, very lovely. Um, let's see. Oh, now I have a plan. I have a plan. So right now it just seems to wake up 
um, somewhere between 7 and 10, I'll say, 7 a.m. 10. And I'm always the first one up by many hours. Um, you know, I live with college age students and Bill has always liked to sleep. So my plan is tomorrow, tomorrow, I'm going to sit in the chair with the, with the laptop open, spreadsheets open, and start collecting the compilation data for cycle one and cycle two, as far as I can get. Um, so I'm going to watch the videos through and I'm going to work on my shawl poncho while I'm watching. So I'll be watching, typing, crocheting um, until, until there's signs of life in the house. And then if folks want to use the TV or whatever, then I'll stop and we'll shift and I'll work on that another time. But I do have a plan now. I'm going to start collecting the data and then I'll figure out how I'm going to put it together into the compilation. So that is all the data I have. So again, I just want to say, and you may have observed this already, I am feeling better, definitely better than I felt, you know, two or three days ago. I still am feeling like the poisoning is real, but I'm feeling like it's manageable. And um, as long as I take it easy and don't expect too much from my body, then it's, it's supporting me. So that's, I'm grateful for that. So again, I'd like to thank you all for your love and support. Thank you for joining me on this journey. We love you. Remember, every day is a gift. Live it.